On December 25, 2021, NASA launched its James Webb Space Telescope, marking the successor to the famous Hubble Telescope as its new flagship astrophysics mission. The telescope will provide higher resolution and sensitivity over its predecessor, allowing scientists to observe some of the most distant events and objects in the universe, including the formation of the first galaxies. Along with its deployment, researchers have proposed that the James Webb Space Telescope might allow for the exploration of one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theories first proposed in the 1970s. In the 1970s, Hawking proposed that dark matter, the invisible substance that makes up most matter in the cosmos, may be made of black holes formed in the earliest moments of the Big Bang. Dark matter makes up over 80% of all the matter in the universe but it doesn't directly interact with light in any way. It just floats around being massive, affecting the gravity within galaxies. It's tempting to think that black holes might be responsible for this elusive stuff. After all, black holes are famously dark, so filling a galaxy with black holes could theoretically explain all the observations of dark matter. Unfortunately, in the modern universe, black holes form only after massive stars die then collapse under the weight of their own gravity. So, making black holes requires many stars, which requires a bunch of normal matter. Scientists know how much normal matter is in the universe from calculations of the early universe, where the first hydrogen and helium formed, and there simply isn't enough normal matter to make all the dark matter astronomers have observed. So, in 1971, Hawking suggested that black holes formed in the chaotic environment of the earliest moments of the Big Bang. There, pockets of matter could spontaneously reach the densities needed to make black holes, flooding the cosmos with them well before the first stars twinkled. Hawking proposed that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter. While the idea was interesting, most astrophysicists focused on finding a new subatomic particle to explain dark matter. What's more, primordial black hole formation models ran into observational issues. If too many formed in the early universe, they changed the picture of the leftover radiation from the early universe, known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB. That meant the theory only worked when the number and size of ancient black holes were fairly limited, or it would conflict with measurements of the CMB. The idea was revived in 2015 when the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory found its first pair of colliding black holes. The two black holes were much larger than expected, and one way to explain their large mass was to say they formed in the early universe, not in the hearts of dying stars. And now, the existence of primordial black holes may be proven, or disproven, soon, courtesy of the James Webb Telescope and the ESA-led Laser Interferometer Space Antenna LISA mission planned for the 2030s. Developed by NASA, ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope, the web can look back more than 13 billion years. If dark matter comprises primordial black holes, more stars and galaxies would have formed around them in the early universe, which is precisely what the cosmic time machine will be able to see. The James Webb Telescope's mission will be able to find the first galaxies formed in the early universe and see stars forming planetary systems. Meanwhile, LISA will pick up gravitational wave signals from early mergers of primordial black holes. Together, the two observatories should give astronomers enough information to piece together the story of the first stars and potentially the origins of dark matter. If the first stars and galaxies already formed in the so-called Dark Ages, Webb should be able to see evidence of them, says astronomer Gunter Heisinger of the European Space Agency. James Webb should reveal new and unexpected discoveries and help humanity understand the origins of the universe and our place in it. One of the objectives is to look back in time over 13.5 billion years to see the first stars and galaxies that formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The telescope will mainly look at the universe in the infrared, while Hubble has examined it since its 1990 launch primarily at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. Webb has a much bigger light-collecting area, letting it look at greater distances and, therefore, further back into time than Hubble. According to Live Science, three astronomers have developed a theory that explains the existence of dark matter and the appearance of the largest black holes in the universe. 
they said that several new instruments, including the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, could produce data needed to finally assess Hawking's famous notion. What I find personally super exciting about this idea is how it elegantly unifies the two really challenging problems that I work on, that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation of growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop. Study co-author Priyamvada Natarajan, an astrophysicist at Yale University, said in a statement as per Live Science. Our study predicts how the early universe would look if, instead of unknown particles, dark matter was made by black holes formed during the Big Bang, as Stephen Hawking suggested in the 1970s, said Nico Capaluti, an assistant professor of physics at the University of Miami and first author of the study stated for publication in the Astrophysical Journal. This would help us to answer one of the most compelling questions of modern astrophysics. How could supermassive black holes in the early universe have grown so big so fast? Given the mechanisms we observe today in the modern universe, they would not have had enough time to form. This would also solve the long-standing mystery of why the mass of a galaxy is always proportional to the mass of the supermassive black hole in its center. Dark matter, which has never been directly observed, is thought to be most of the matter in the universe and acts as the scaffolding upon which galaxies form and develop. On the other hand, black holes, which can be found at the centers of most galaxies, have been observed. They are points in space where matter is so tightly compacted that it creates intense gravity. The new study suggests that so-called primordial black holes of all sizes account for all black matter in the universe. Their model tweaks the first theory proposed by Hawking and fellow physicist Bernard Carr, who argued that in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, tiny fluctuations in the universe's density may have created an undulating landscape with lumpy regions that had extra mass. These lumpy areas would collapse into black holes. Their model shows that the first stars and galaxies would have formed around black holes in the early universe. They also propose that primordial black holes would have had the agility to grow into supermassive black holes by feasting on gas and stars in their vicinity or by merging with other black holes. Primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seeds from which all the supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way. What I find personally super exciting about this idea is how it elegantly unifies the two really challenging problems that I work on, that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop. Primordial black holes also may resolve another cosmological puzzle, the excess of infrared radiation synced with X-ray radiation that has been detected from distant, dim sources scattered around the universe. The study authors said growing primordial black holes would present exactly the same radiation signature. If proven true, with data collected from this month's launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, the discovery may transform scientific understanding of the origins and nature of two cosmic mysteries, dark matter and black holes.